Alright guys, let's do it again. Let's scratch that itch. Talk about some high school recruiting. Talk about the Gators. Uh, big weekend. I know it's a quick turnaround. I wanted to get some news out. Get everything out from the weekend. Wrap everything up. A lot happened this weekend. I mean, a lot of positive. A lot of good news. Uh, Napier and the coaching staff. I mean, they went all out for these guys. Rolled out the red carpet treatment. Uh, wanted to break some news. We just landed uh, three-star uh, safety. Um, <clears throat> Mitchell, it was a battle between us and Tennessee. He picked the Gators. He's a mid-level three-star, 8-5 ranking on 247 sports. Uh, kid's, uh, you know, pretty decent player. Senior film was really good. Uh, big hitter. Um, coaching staff liked him, so they told him, they gave him the green light and took him. Uh, notice our average, still the same, 90, 12 commits now, or 12 players in this class. Uh, still 41st. He didn't really move the needle much. Uh, so as far as recruiting goes on class ranking, that kind of sucks. I'm not super excited about the, the pickup. Um, you know, he's another body, another depth guy. He could develop in a year or two. That's what we're hoping anyways. Um, but what I liked about it, though, from his quotes, um, they kind of made it seem like he had to develop some. But some of these guys on these visits, the biggest thing that I took away was – they're not getting the mullen talk of, yeah, man, you can come in and, uh, you know, five years from now you might play uh, after you develop forever. They're, they're telling these guys right off the rip. You come in, you're competing, you got a chance to start as a true freshman. If you're good enough, we're going to put you on the field. That's what kids want to hear. Even if that's not reality, that's what you got to tell them. Um, you start telling them, you know, oh, you got to come in and sit a couple years, and they're a five-star player. Guess where they're going? Alabama, Georgia. Clemson, those teams make the tough calls. They don't care about people's feelings. Um, good example is the quarterback, uh, oh, shoot, when Trevor Lawrence was there. Guy was there, come in, solid player, end up going to Missouri. Uh, he puts Trevor Lawrence in, and he takes the job. You know, true freshman. Talent displaces seniority. I'm sorry. Uh, competition is good. It breeds success, so. That's what these guys are preaching, and I, I like the message going out right now. These guys are killing it on the recruiting trail. It's awesome what they're doing. Um, it's awesome the response these kids gave after these visits. Um, also, more breaking news. This has been a good weekend, good timing after the championship game uh, to get the Gators out there. I like how Napier's doing that. His press conference was awesome. He talked about his staffing, talked about recruiting. Um, so he has a phased approach we're about to complete phase one is what he calls it the introduction uh or induction period or something like that so anyways uh how many florida coaches have you seen give a press conference for the fans in the middle of january i would have to say zero i don't think i've ever seen a press conference given in mid-january he come out there and basically talked about um taking a people first approach and developing people um he's a player's coach for sure um this guy's going to be super successful doing what he does. So the press conference was awesome. Uh, our press guys asked some terrible questions. They could ask better questions. But overall, I liked everything they said. I thought it was really cool that he's engaging the fans like he is. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so Florida Gators hire Sean Spencer. Uh, he was a def as the co-defensive coordinator um, and defensive line coach. Uh, that's a huge pickup. Dude's a stud recruiter. He's coached at Penn State, um, two years with the Giants, uh, so NFL experience. I think this was a home run hire personally. I like the guy. Um, I like the pedigree. <clears throat> Penn State from 14 to 19. He was at Vandy uh, with James Franklin from 11 to 13. And I don't know how old you guys are, but if y'all remember, Vandy was incredible when James Franklin was there. Uh, they were really, really good. And so, anyway, you're talking about a guy that can develop guys um, and recruit. That's what we need on the defensive side of the ball. Defensive line hasn't been so great the last couple years. Uh, the talent's dropped off immensely in the production um, after McElwain's guys left. That's uh, one thing about him. He could evaluate even though some of the guys weren't highly ranked. Um, all right, so he's got SEC experience. Um, he's had 10 draft picks under him, which is really cool. That's that's amazing. Um <clears throat> so we've got one defensive spot left on the coaching staff and we're done with this thing it's wrapped up uh, i think there's still going to be a lot several dozen or more off-field assistant hires 
Uh, again, Napier's building an army, man. The, he's got so many people. I, there's no way I can remember all their names. I just know it's way bigger, probably going to be twice the size um, of Mullen's staff. And those people are going to help tremendously with recruiting. Um, landed a transfer corner. This was a shocker. I didn't see coming. We haven't even talked about this yet. We got Jalen Kimber from Georgia. Uh, kid got hurt over there, but he was going to be a starter. Uh, he's a four-star, 9'5" ranking uh so a high highly ranked four-star guy uh with plenty of time left to play he's not a one-year guy uh, georgia did not want to lose this kid and we took him anyway sorry guys i got kids and they come in and interrupt i had to pause the video uh, all right so you got jalen kimber coming in uh from georgia that was a surprise uh, again 105 ranked prospect in the country um, in his class, so we're Billy Napier's stacking talent for through the high school, high school ranks through the portal. Um, guys, crushing it, man! I'm telling you, like we're just stacking players up. I didn't realize we were gonna take this many transfers. Um, so that's a position of need. Uh, we just who's a top ranked player, almost as highly ranked as uh Kyir Elam. He's going to the NFL, so there's your replacement right there. I'm um, gonna come in and probably start day one. Biggest thing with him is keeping this kid healthy. Uh, hopefully he does stay healthy and we'll be fine at that position, but I like where we're going. Um, if you think about the guys on the roster, uh, Napier is stacking talent up and I, I believe he's taking a high number of transfers because I mean, just look how bad we were last year and it wasn't just development. I mean, coach Savage was a freak in the weight room. These guys, they were strong. Uh, they were developed. Um, there's just not a lot of talent on this team. I mean, there is as far as rankings go, but some of those rankings were a mirage with this last couple classes under Mullen. We all know with the um, guys not qualifying and low-hanging fruit that other teams didn't want. So, yeah, it might be a four-star guy, but it was one that was overranked or other teams weren't after him, stuff like that. You know, besides, the, you know, there's an exception. There's some guys like Dexter. You know, he landed some good players, Hopper. Uh, I think Wingo could be a good player eventually. He just hasn't done anything. I don't know why. And that could be coaching too, and that's why Christian Robinson's gone. Guy could recruit, but he could not he could not coach. And he was not developing guys at the linebacker position. Um oh, and Ventrell Miller's coming back, by the way, at that linebacker position. That's that's gonna be key to have a senior guy there, a uh, big hitter that can fill the gap, uh, get in the hole and stop some running backs because we don't have a lot of size at the position. These young guys are gonna have to add weight. Um, so some breaking news as well. Uh, this is the third piece of breaking news today. Um, we're in the running for transfer, uh, Javon Baker from Alabama, wide receiver. That was a secret visit that and that's something that's rare these days with Twitter and social media. Um, he was on campus this weekend. He's got a, a really good connection with Carlos Del Rio. They played on the same team. Um, <clears throat> Carlos Del Rio Wilson. I'm sorry. This guy's got like the longest name I've ever seen on a football squad um top two four seven wide receiver in his class so there you go another highly ranked transfer player um and we need guys at wide receiver there's not a lot of talent there um henderson's looked okay at times but not consistent uh he's more of a top end straight line speed guy henderson does not have the the moves and space and tight spaces um he's going to be more of a deep threat i think i don't ever think he's going to explode with like a ton of uh you know, he's not going to be a thousand yard receiver. He's a solid piece. I think Jaquavion Frazier's uh, is a guy that's going to step up next year, be a good possession receiver again, but nobody there at the position is mind blowing. So that here's your guy right here to come in and replace uh, Jacob Copeland's production. Um, I think he could be that good. This guy's a burner, another highly ranked four star prospect. Um, and I love stealing these guys from Alabama and Georgia, man. I mean, coming from the two best teams in the country, coming to the Gators. Uh, you got to like where that's going. Um, <clears throat> teams just had a lot of holes that we're trying to fill in, and that's what Napier's doing, and he's doing it at a, a very successful clip with these highly ranked transfer guys. Uh, definitely upgrading the talent. Um, so I'm still calling that we're going to land linebacker Perkins. I do think he ends up picking the Gators in the end. Uh, we killed it on his visit. He's still committed to Texas A&M. Uh, I think he's just trying to do, you know, show those guys respect and do things the right way right now. Uh, but I believe he is going to flip to the good guys on National Signing Day. And I think Napier lands another five-star guy. 
on short notice in this transition class, which would be epic to have two five-star guys in the same class in a transition period. I don't know if any coach has done that, honestly, besides maybe maybe Urban Meyer. Um, I know McElwain did. He had the offensive linemen um, and uh, C.C. Jefferson, Martez Ivy in his class, but that class was ranked 21st in the country because uh, the rest of the class was just bottom feeding low hanging fruit. Uh, those are the two guys that were exceptions to the rest of the class. But to land two highly rated guys like that, plus a solid core of four star guys is probably the best I've ever seen. Um, as long as I've been following Gator football, I, like I said, I still think we're going to finish top 15. Um, uh, but yeah, Colin Perkins, um, the other consistent thing I've been seeing too, is every guy that's visited Florida since Napier's got here, has us in their top two and top three um, much more consistently than I've seen in the past. We're not just a hat on the table at this point where Florida's been the running joke of every commitment watch um, on national signing days, early national signing days. We're always just a hat on the table lately, it seems like, with the guys that we truly want that other teams are after, uh, like the Bamas and Georgias and Texas A&M. Jimbo Fisher's killing it out there. Um, he keeps going like he's going. He's going to have a roster as loaded as Alabama and Georgia. Um, I think if he gets the talent up to that point, uh, he might be in the running for a national championship here soon too. So, um, But I, I think Napier's going to Napier's gonna get us back there. Uh, definitely see it. Uh, so, yeah, top three with Winston, and that's the message these guys are sending. Not a hat on the table anymore. Uh, so that's got to make us all feel really good about that. Um Kids have us leading a lot now, uh, calling us their outright leader after these visits, which is super exciting to hear, and I know you guys are excited about it as well. Um, some other news, Arliss Boardingham, uh, the tight end prospect. I know we all really want this kid, uh, four-star guy. Uh, Piegler was with him, killed the visit. Um, I hope he comes. This is one I'm not so confident in. I think he ends up at Oregon. It's really hard. You know, I... I Texas guys and Louisiana is one thing. You can get a few of those kids. We've went, we've actually been really successful in Texas the last few years. We've got a little bit of a pipeline going there, and same with Louisiana. Uh, but Oregon, uh, it's on the West Coast. West Coast, kid, West Coast kids are going to be super hard to pull in, so I'm picking Oregon on this one, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, again, I'm not going to be super upset about that one if he picks Oregon. That's going to be kind of expected. He lives in California. Kids want their family at the games. Um, <clears throat> one thing also about this weekend that I noticed it was huge, uh, facilities, they're going to be done in June. The new football facility, the Hevner football complex is supposed to be finished. The outside is done. They are working on the inside. Napier is making some signature changes of his own, which is going to be cool. Um, I'm sure there was a lot lacking with Mullen here. Um, probably didn't even know that what the thing was going to look like, <laughs> So anyway, Napier's got some changes coming, but yeah, June, I think it was actually supposed to be done in like March or April, but with the new changes Napier brought in, he had some demands. Uh, one of the reasons he's at Florida is because the administration committed to him that they would do whatever he said for football. Um, so we are going to meet those demands that he has, and it will be done in June. The players were talking about it like crazy this weekend. But matter of fact, they didn't even show them the current facilities at all. All they did was show them all the new stuff on campus coming. Uh, apparently, they're getting new apartments. New do the new dorms are going to be completely upgraded with a parking garage, perfect location. Uh, so there's a lot of exciting things happening in Gator Nation. Uh, this is going to be really good for these kids. They deserve it. They work hard um, you know, and give a lot to the university. They deserve to be treated right. And it's about time the Gators catch up with this arms race and these other colleges because we are way behind and there's still more that needs to be done. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about that's pretty cool uh, with this recruiting class and all the classes going forward, uh, as long as Napier's the CEO of this team, there's this new thing called Gator Made. Um, it's a person, uh, people development type thing outside of football. Uh, football will be included to help these guys, you know, make revenue, make money, stuff like that. That's why we have the Gator Collective now. You guys should check that out. Um, but this is going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. This is the off-field part of it uh, for the staff. They're going to help these kids actually develop, learn about life, learn about how to be successful, how to make a career outside of football. Um, that wasn't there before. It was just like, hey, you fend for yourself. You're playing for us. We're going to focus on football, and that's it. A lot of these kids were talking about this Gator Made thing, so they sound like they've bought into this and they're super excited about it. 
I think it's good in general. It's one of the things that's lacking in our society now. They don't even teach hardly any economics in high schools um, or how to balance a checkbook or a banking account, stuff like that. And this stuff is super important. I'm sure it's higher level stuff than that, obviously. But um, again, something similar to that approach there. So anyway, I uh, appreciate if you guys would just like the video and subscribe to my channel. Um, so this weekend was a big weekend and I'll be putting some more content out soon. Y'all have a good one.